In the winter of 1943, the fjords of northern Norway provided a lair for the last of Adolf Hitler's battle fleet. One of them was the battle cruiser Scharnhorst, named after one of Germany's greatest military heroes and a thorn in the side of the Royal Navy since 1939. As long as she remained in being, Scharnhorst posed a threat to Britain's Arctic convoys, the Allies' supply lifeline to the hard-pressed Soviet Union. On Christmas Day, 1943, Scharnhorst set sail for the last time. The prize of the Arctic convoys was to lure her into a trap set by the Royal Navy. Its high command had received advanced warning of the Scharnhorst sortie from Britain's top-secret code-breaking center at Bletchley Park. Even as she set sail, the fate of the Scharnhorst had been sealed. Scharnhorst's life had begun when her keel was laid on the 15th of June, 1934. But the naval story in which she played a key part had begun some 70 years earlier, as the rulers of Prussia began to build up a German empire. In a war with Denmark, the Prussians quickly realized their naval inferiority and began to strengthen their fleet. The architect of German power was Prince Otto von Bismarck, whose policy was one of blood and iron. Bismarck ensured that Germany emerged as the dominant military and strategic power in Central Europe. A new Kaiser, Wilhelm II, forced Bismarck to resign in 1890. But his policy of military expansion continued. And alongside his superb army, the Kaiser, who had ambitions to rival Britain as a world power, took a particular interest in the German Navy. Under the command of Admiral Alfred von Tirpitz, resources were poured into building up a major fleet. One capable of a battle in the North Sea against England. German naval building programs began to ring alarm bells in London. In 1888, an admiralty committee had declared that the Royal Navy must be at least equal to the naval strength of any two other countries. German naval expansion threatened to upset this two-power standard on which Britain's naval supremacy and its links with its far-flung empire depended. After the war, Germany was allowed to retain only two old pre-dreadnought battleships and some smaller ships. The Treaty of Versailles limited the German Navy to ships of no more than 10,000 tons and a maximum armament of 11-inch guns. In 1922, under the Washington Naval Treaty, all capital ships under construction were to be scrapped, with the exception of the Japanese Mutsu and US Maryland classes. The Royal Navy was allowed to build two battleships, Nelson and Rodney. Then no more could be constructed for 10 years, after which the replacement of capital ships over 20 years old would be allowed. A limit of 35,000 tons was established for all capital ships. Although the ban on the building of battleships was later extended for another five years, this did not deter both the French and Italian navies from launching new capital ship programs. <laughs> 